Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am your host, Angel Ferguson, and we thank you so very much for joining us today. For truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you so very much for joining us, and we pray that uh, the will of the Father is being done in your life today. On this awesome, awesome Thursday afternoon and here in uh, Tampa, Florida, we are expecting some rain later today, but we need the rain because the rain does so much. And so we are grateful for each and every one of you, and we love to stay connected with you. There are several ways in which you can connect with us via our website, www.afergusonswrp.simplesite.com. Via the website, you have the opportunity to check out our ministry, uh, the School of Ministry and Mentoring program that we offer, the courses that we offer. We are actually in our enrollment uh, season for summer classes, and some of the classes that we offer are the Writer's Launch, Leadership Skills, uh, Purpose, Goals, and Dreams, uh, growing unto spiritual uh, maturity, a breakthrough in my life, and also ministry gifts and spiritual gifts. And so the program has courses as well as the mentoring program. And uh, we are recognized by the state of Florida as a religious institution. So when you complete your course, we will provide you with a certificate of completion from Angel Ferguson's Ministries. Other areas within, within the website are our publishing division, uh, the bookstore, Motivation That Inspires, Hope and Truth Magazine, which we are, are excited. We have reached the Read More via Issue.com for the second time, and we thank God just for that, that is another avenue in which we we expound and we share words of encouragement from the Holy Spirit. And so we thank God for allowing us to have these avenues to come and, and have a platform to minister unto you just to encourage your spirits. Other avenues in which you can connect with us are via here on the radio station as well as our, our television station here via on our YouTube channel as well as by loud just check out the balance of life and you can tune in to our weekly program via by loud uh, we are listed in the TV guide uh, you can catch us on Fridays at 12 30 p.m. Uh, daily you can check out our YouTube channel and as God allows, we will move into other uh, broadcasting channels. Uh, if you are looking to connect with us and looking for prayer partners, we'd love to keep you in our prayers and you know just keep you lifted up. We do that anyway, but then there are some things that are specific that you uh, want to connect with. Please email us at aFergusonwrp at yahoo.com. Share your testimonies, your triumphs. Uh, we will definitely uh, do as the Word of God says. We will uh, praise with you and, and we will cry with you. Uh, that is our purpose, uh, to become prayer partners uh, for the edification of the body. We all have to grow into spiritual maturity. And, and so that is where God has us now. And what we have been sharing over the past couple of weeks. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And so much goes along with that. And, and we're going to share that with you. We started on yesterday. Uh, actually beyond yesterday. But we, we picked up on yesterday. Uh, just talking about the intent of the heart. And, and today what we're going to step over into is, is really asking the question, the things that I do, are they pleasing unto God? Or are they pleasing unto me? And so I know that <clears throat> we are often taught, and it, it, it is so true, that we should not be pleasing unto man, 
but we're going to take it a step further. We shouldn't even become pleasing unto ourselves. What are the alternative motives behind our works, behind our words, behind our actions? Is it to please God? Is it to bring glorification and awareness to God? Or have we placed God along with it to make it look good when in fact our intent is far from it? And so we, we are going to share that with you, just some words that uh, has been within, within my prayers and just ringing within my spirit. Um, I know that four o'clock this morning, uh, the words, uh, I surrender all has been in my spirit. And as I begin to sing those words, uh, the Holy Spirit began to let me know that that's a, that's a, that's a song of commitment. Uh, that's a song of, of dedication, of surrender, of, of bowing myself, bearing all unto him. And so that song is, is just ringing and ringing in my spirit. I surrender all. And so we pray that uh, what we share here today will cause you to examine your relationship. with the father where am i what 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 is the motive behind my intent the things that i do do they please god the things that i say the things the, the places that i go my thoughts we are in a time that we have to become real when it comes to our salvation There is no time and there is no room for uh, playing Christian, pretending. There is no place for a lukewarm Christian. Either you are in or you are out. We thank you so much for joining us today. For truly, truly, we appreciate all that he is doing in this day we're going to take a look at st matthews six and nine we're also going to go over to the 33rd verse We're talking about the intent of the heart. Matthew 6 and 9 says, After this manner, therefore pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so I have uh, gotten into a place that daily my prayer includes the Our Father prayer. And it has been piece by piece. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. In order for the fullness of God to operate in our lives, we must submit unto the will of the Father. We must, and I know must is a strong word, but it is a part of his will that I present myself as a living sacrifice. And exactly what does that mean? 
we're going to take a look at Ephesians because we're talking about the intent of the heart and the fullness of God operating in our lives. And so in order for the fullness of God to operate in our lives, we ourselves, the things that we thought we knew, the things that we operated and moved in that were not of God, has to be purged and removed from us. It is a breaking. He is the potter and we are the clay. And he shapes and he molds us. And in order for him to shape and mold us, we have to be broken. That breaking is, is not an easy breaking. Because we want to hold on to what we thought we knew. But once you say, I surrender all. Once you say, I, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. And you begin to grow unto spiritual maturity. Then he begins to line you up unto a spiritual perfection for the working of the ministry. And so things have to be removed from within us. The things that we have built up and 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 we did it and and but it was not of him. He did not get the glory of it because we did it. And I am a firm witness, I I a first partaker to know and to share with you that he will move the things that you have built. He will move the things that you hold on to, that you lean on, so that you have to lean totally on him. And so when you get into that place and you begin to say, you know, where is my independence? But he needs you dependent on him so that his will may be done. <clears throat> And so over in Ephesians, the third chapter, starting at the 17th verse, and, and let's back up. Let's go to the 14th verse. It says, for this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints and I'll stop right there this this breaking this transformation this molding others who have gone before us the apostles the the prophets the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers, uh, the disciples, before they even got to apostleship and evangelists and pastors and teachers, they too had to get to this breaking. And so it says that we may be able to comprehend with all the saints, that I may be able to comprehend with those who have gone before me so that I may rightly divide the word of truth, so that I may allow God, when he directs the Holy Spirit to lead and guide me, that I am attentive and sensitive to that guidance, that, that I don't override it, that I don't grieve the Holy Spirit, that I do according to Romans 12 and 1, that I know how to present my body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him, which is my reasonable service, my reasonable service for all that he has done. It's the least I can do. It says, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. That is where we want to journey to, that we might be filled with all the fullness of God. 
when that becomes your desire and that drawing comes from the Holy Spirit, when that becomes your desire, then your prayers will, will change through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We know not what we ought to pray for. The Spirit knows. And so even in our prayers, and, and you will notice that uh, through the drawing of the Holy Spirit, your prayers will, will change, your study will change, your time in the Word will change, and it's for that molding. Before He can mold us, He must break us. Purge me. Remove the things from me that are not of you. That's a tall order. And I must encourage you that as you begin to pray these prayers, that breaking does not come the way that we expect it to come. Remember, thy will be done. His will. And so we could have some things about us that uh, we don't fully comprehend, that we, we might not see as hindrances, but he knows. He knows the intent of the heart. Exactly what is your intent? What was your purpose? What is your agenda? Why did you go to the cross? Was it my way? Or was it his way? Or was it someone else's way? Why Why did you go that route? Why did you... Um, why did you say and do as you did? Why did why was your presentation as it was? What is the intent of your heart? We can say something but our heart could be far from it. And and as we said earlier in the the podcast, just because you add God to it does not mean that that was the intent of your heart. It must start in the heart. And so now I, I look over what I have done up until this point, and I have repented. God, if I, that, you know the intent of my heart, and those things that, that I did do that were not pleasing unto you, but pleasing unto me, not even pleasing unto man, but they were pleasing unto me. I ask you that you forgive me. Because the intent of my heart was not pure. It didn't bring God the glory. Just because we, we, we and I don't want to use the word slap when it comes to mentioning of God, but when we slap God on the end of something uh it, that doesn't make it pure that mu that doesn't make it pleasing unto him because you put it on the end and it should have been at the beginning and so we must keep christ first in all that we do keep him at the beginning not not in the middle not at the end but keep him at the beginning and when we keep him at the beginning and let him go through the entire process. Keep focus on him through the entire process. And that takes us over to Matthew 6 and 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And so I must keep him at the beginning. I can't add him at the end and expect him uh, and expect to say he got the glory out of it, that he led and guide me. It doesn't happen that way. I must keep him at the beginning. My intent must be to seek first. It says first. Seek him first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. What is the purpose of the kingdom of God? What is his intentions? What are God's intentions for the kingdom? To share the good news of the gospel. To share with unbelievers 
about his goodness, about the salvation, about his healing power, about his grace, his mercy, about his unconditional love to bring others into the knowledge of Christ. It says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness, not my righteousness, not man's righteousness, not pleasing unto myself, not pleasing man, but his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you, but we first must start at the beginning, but seek ye first the kingdom. If I seek the kingdom and his righteousness, then I am on the road map to be filled with all the fullness of God. And as I am learning, and this is when we are uh, making sure that our intent lines up, then I go over to Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so that selfish nature that we've all had to please the flesh. To please man. Be conformed. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so I must take the attention from me. I must take the attention from pleasing man. And I must focus it on seeking the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. My focus is now transferred to God and God alone. I must prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I must submit myself as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is my reasonable service. And so therefore, I must become so very, very careful about what comes out of my mouth, the places that I go, what I allow to come into my spirit. I must become careful of the intent of my heart. What is my agenda? What is my agenda? My agenda becomes that souls are drawn to Christ. That I share the good news of Jesus Christ. That I encourage those to uh, reestablish their relationship with Christ or to begin a new relationship with him, that they grow into spiritual maturity. That becomes my intent, my purpose, not that I may gain another follower or another like, not even that you would hear my voice but that when I open my mouth, I am being led by the Holy Spirit to speak those things to compel you to get to know our Lord and Savior for yourself. Don't take my word for it. I only came by to encourage you to pique your curiosity so that you may pick up this word of God. And begin to read it for yourselves. That you would begin to bow your head in prayer. 
seeking him for yourself. That you too may grow unto spiritual maturity. And when we lean and depend on ourselves, God has a way of removing those things. He has a way of removing people. He does. Because he wants you to depend on him. Remember, our thoughts are not his thoughts. And our ways are not his ways. His ways are as high as the heavens are above the earth. And if you look up in the sky, you'll notice that there is no ending. Even as the clouds begin to move, you will begin to see that there's yet more above the clouds. Who can reach the end of the clouds? No one. And so I say to you today, and I just really, really want to encourage your heart and your spirits. Understand what salvation is. It's not something that we can pick up and lay down. It's not something that we can do on a part-time basis. It is not uh, something to play with. When we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we have an obligation to live holy. And so those things that we uh, might think that we're doing in the dark, there are even some things that you haven't even realized that you were doing. But as we share it with you on a previous uh, podcast, Psalms 139. Such an awesome word today. One thirty nine, twenty three, and twenty four says, "Search me, O O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way of ever in everlasting. Search me." Because you created me, so you know all about me, and what I might think is right is far from the truth, is far from your way. Remember, my thoughts are not his thoughts, and so I might think something is right. I might think that my way is, is good and clear, and it is the right, right way to go, but it might not be his way. And so I must submit myself unto the word of God in this in this guidance. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God. And so this too becomes my prayer in Psalms 139, 23 and 24. Search me, 